Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> we get John, John. <laughs> Put your allegiance to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> First up is Kyle. Okay. As you asked, we'd like to have first yeah. first talk. Thank you very much. Um, reporting back on the uh, permission I was given to trap uh, on town land in Gully Island and uh, my neighborhood to try to trap out some pest animals that were giving us grief, uh, I and my neighbors. So um, it was not a completely unfruitful exercise. I did manage to catch a uh, raccoon in my own neighborhood using a, um, a dog proof trap uh, and I took him with a 22 and, uh, and that happened on Mr. Kendall's property which is just to the south of uh, Gully Oven. Um, the next raccoon did not happen during the regular trapping season. Regular trapping season ended the 31st of December. I uh, then focused on beaver in the Salmon Falls. Uh, this is my first year trap, trying to trap for beaver, so I did not catch any beaver, but uh, as soon as we got some more open water, I did catch another raccoon in one of those drowning sets. So, got two raccoons out of it. I have not received back the first skin from the tannery, but uh, this is the best practices. I trapper tanned it and then sent it out so that it could be a finished piece. Um, for the sport of trapping, there's been some maybe new developments uh, talk, talked about in Augusta. Uh, they're thinking about doing away with tagging coyotes uh, since folks can hunt them 365 night day. Uh, they're wondering if um, we might see more use of coyotes because they're the only animal you're allowed to kind of leave as you kill. Not to make a, a effort to make use of that animal. Um, they're trying to make it so that if you do hunt and kill a coyote, that a trapper could be given the animal to make use of the fur. Uh, and that's, that's a good idea. Um, the one thing that I, I'm kind of disappointed, though, is that the tagging does keep a good statistic uh, for what animals are taken. And uh, they don't keep tags for raccoons anymore, um, but I imagine that uh, any animal can feel pressure from man after a certain amount of time. So although the uh, predator populations here in Maine are high, uh, it looks like uh, legislation and other folks like myself are getting around the idea of managing them. So um, I'm pleased to report that I did have some success getting rid of some raccoons. Although we did still see some attacks during the season, which was rather embarrassing. Um, we lost some more chickens. My neighbor lost uh, two hens in his rooster. Um, to a fo He thinks a fox. Uh, and I, I kind of agree with him since I saw the sign. And uh, the other neighbor had, see had actually seen the animal. So we still do have some canines in the area. And um, maybe next year I'll, I'll try again. Um, I did manage to have two successful hatches of chickens, so um, I'll be able to at least make my neighbors whole with whatever losses they had. Um, that'll be just a, sorry I didn't get your beast, but I'm going to have some eggs. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. I, I think they had heard also from Augusta, they're thinking about uh, expanding limits on bear, um, because we're not taking enough bear. But I'm uncertain where that goes. Uh, and again, with the uh, with the sport, uh, animal damage control. And there's some rule changes coming up with that, and uh, a lot of men who are trappers also do animal damage control. I, I really have no interest in taking this and making it my business. But um, there are some changes coming down where they're going to require background checks and testing to get a uh, ADC license in the future. And that all gets grandfathered in in June, so I don't think I'll be trying to go for my ADC license in the meantime. Um, and if 
if I wanted it later, the test and the background check wouldn't impact me. So I'm um, keeping that door open, but I don't think I'll be uh, a licensed uh, paid trapper uh, anytime soon. So that is the report for trapping, at least in my neck of the woods. Um, I will be tanning the second raccoon. I did not know, or I, I didn't want to risk except upsetting anybody by bringing in an animal skin. So um, it's at home and uh, will be shipped out to the, the uh, tanning company um, as soon as I feel it's ready to go. But thank you for your, uh, your offer, or thank you for the permission. Uh, I greatly appreciate that. That was um, something that I was very happy to receive and uh, we'll maybe look again different neighborhoods if we get complaints. Uh, maybe I can help the town out free of charge again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy your days. Happy Easter. Hams and lambs. <laughs> You're a tough act to follow. I know. <laughs> you know. You did a good job. Yeah, so he's very well versed. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, we discussed the um, burning of brush debris and stuff like that for citizens. Um, and we discussed it and you kind of left it to me. Um, so I, I feel it's a, like we discussed, um, it's a liability. Um, also, it's taking away from public funds. For, for Personal zone, uh, people's own gain. Private use. Yeah, private use. So, so I'm going to be stopping that um, at, at practice. So, um, unfortunately, like I said, it, I'd rather have the money in the funds um, directed towards public funding instead of yeah. helping somebody else privately. Um, it just helps the department a long way with. The uh, you know going out and and paying for fuel, um, payroll, uh, truck use, uh, and stuff like that. Something breaks, it just adds more to it. If we actually had something break out of fire, I totally understand. Um, but for just going, but there's nothing to stop. Let's say I let's say you have an elderly person that wants to do a fire and wants some help. Nothing to stop them with privately contacting a firefighter. And saying, hey, I'll pay you 50 bucks if you want to come and just do my brush pile. Correct. So that, yeah. because that's a private transaction between them and yep. somebody else. And, and they, the option is there, but uh, state law um, mandates that you must have permission from the, the property owner mm -hmm. to burn. So it has to be right. a written right. you know, permission that they bring in and obtain the permit. Or they can actually obtain the permit um, themselves online for free. And then they can uh, have somebody come in and assist them burn, but that person has to be out there with them. Yep. Yep. So, um, as you are aware, we had a, a fire last night. Um, unfortunately, we lost the building. Uh, we arrived, I was the first person there. Um, I arrived and there was smoke coming from pretty much everywhere uh, in the building. Um, and I knew it, it was doubtful that we were going to actually save anything. Um, as soon as we uh, started pulling the first line off the truck, uh, fire just started blowing out the back and both sides. Mm -hmm. So um, we had plenty of water. Uh, we we yeah. had summer's worth of in there. Yep, summer's worth came in and, and drafted from the, the stream. Um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, I, there was a possibility that we could have saved the building, but uh, there was a lot, I believe there was a delay in calling the fire department. So um, <clears throat> there was another error um, that was when the person left the building, uh, they left the building uh, with the sliding door wide open. So that fed air coming into the building and it just, Fall right back out. So, um, unfortunately, they have stone that they burned. No, it was a cooking fire. Oh, it was a cooking fire. Yep, unfortunately. Um, so, I mean, we probably, like I said, we, we were that close to the, to the fire. I mean, we had, uh, I mean, we had actually six people at the station when the call came in, 
So we left with two trucks and plus myself. Um, and then, you know, others came fairly quickly. Um, Bill from the other side of town with the tank truck and the ambulance went out too. So I mean, we had we had a total of 13 people show up um, for us. Mm -hmm. And plus we had our, our unbelievable, our first mutual aid truck showed up with South Burwick. Um, they happened to be in the truck in South Burwick getting ready to head out to do a burn detail. Go figure. Um, so they, ha they happened to be on the road and they, they just came right to us. I saw some North Burwick vehicles there. And yeah. So, um, Sanford was there too, weren't they? Sanford did not come. Sanford didn't come? No. Um, they were busy with their own fire. No. Um, we, had, uh, we had trucks from Newington, Durham, um, North Burwick, South Burwick, Burwick. Summersworth. Uh, I mean, it was it, it was impressive the people that showed up. Rochester, I mean, impressive the people showed up to help. Um, you know, and we, I got a lot of compliments from other departments on the way that the fire was handled, um, the actual care of uh, our responders. Um, we called a PAR, which is a personal accountability report. Um, every 20 minutes, uh, dispatcher let us know. I'd call out, let them know, you know, to the operations officer, which was Deputy Harmon, said, we're at 20 minutes. And he goes, okay. And a couple minutes later, he called back and says, I have a par. So he's letting us know that everybody's okay, everybody's safe, nobody's missing. Um, so we're, we're moving forward. We're um, taking this serious, you know, our accountability. Um, and the, the safety of all our responders. Good. So, but I mean, unfortunately, um, we just, the building was too far gone by the time we, we pulled up. So, so I just figured I'd give you a little report on that. Um, I mean, it was, a, it was, it was an accidental fire. Um, and unfortunately, I mean, there was nothing that we could have done on that one. So. Uh, otherwise, in the department, um, you know, we're maintaining, we're moving forward, just getting things done, uh, training. Uh, right now, they're they're all in a uh, uh, community um, community support meeting um, to to do you know, public uh, relations uh, throughout the community. Uh, there's seven or eight of them down there now, trying to figure out what they want to do. They're talking pancake breakfast. They're talking a bunch of other stuff um, to try to draw the community in and be part of be part of the town. So um, they're working on the school aspect with the, giving the kids a ride to school in the fire trucks. And, um, you know, just to to get back into the community again. Mm -hmm. So takes a while, but we're we're doing it. But otherwise, that's it. A displaced family. Displaced family. Um, Red Cross putting them up at all, or so. <clears throat> so we had a, it was an issue. Um, I called the Red Cross originally. Um, hour and a half later, they still they. Twenty minutes after I called, their national emergency dispatch center called me, saying we'll have somebody call you um, right away. And we'll go from there, and they will take care of everything from there. Hour and a half later, no response, still, from the Red Cross. Um, I called um, the group, 1-800-BOARD-UP, um, which does boarding up of buildings and stuff like that. Um, they also do victim assistance. Um, I called them and told them the situation and that the family had no insurance, um, so they weren't able to, to help out with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, no problem. Uh, they came out and got them a hotel room for two nights. I believe it was two nights, Deb? Two nights. Yep. Um, the Legion showed up to offer yes, um, did. to help. Um, and then while I was with one of our firefighters, um, I got a call from the Red Cross, the director of Maine, um, that was not happy because the uh, 
emergency center out of Washington didn't call them. They get a phone call through somebody else I had talked to. <clears throat> so, um, so they were they were not happy, and then eventually they showed up. I believe either last night or early this morning. This morning. Yeah. So, uh, Deb and Cindy um, from our department was a, a great asset to us. Um, they stayed with the families of the family, um, got all the information um, from them that I needed for reports and, and stuff like that, uh, and just made sure that they were okay throughout the whole process. Um, it's a it's a horrible experience to go through, um, not only for some of you know the responders, but also for the families um, that are that are going through it. Uh, we did have one firefighter who was injured. Um, I went over after the fire and stayed with the, fire, the firefighter at the hospital until he was cleared. Um, he's got a technically a, a fractured um, ankle, roughly a tib, a tibula. Um, it's a chip bone that's uh, also a bad strain or sprain. So he's out anyways for, for at least a week um, until they can figure, you know, make sure he's healed and be able to walk on it and stuff like that. Right now he's on crutches. So, um, could have been worse, uh, but um, he was he was able to kind of guide himself um, off the truck when, when it happened. He got tangled up in some holes. So, but that's uh, that's it right now. All reports have been filed with with workers' comp and right. mimic and stuff like that. So um, I can't say you guys did a great job last night. Excuse me. You did a great job last night. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I was a little frustrated at the beginning when I was trying to get a hold of dispatch. Yeah. Um, that was hard. Right. Two fires at the exact same time. Oh. Uh, Sam had, Sam had a fire and we had a fire at the exact same time. Yeah. So, you know, on the same channel, different channels. Oh. The, this time was different channels. So it's who do you, you know, they're trying to pick who they're trying to listen to, and so, and they, I mean, you hear one company, but you can't hear the other. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, we're working through it. Right? Yep, it does. Yep. Um, so we're working through it, and uh, great rapport with with them now over there. Good. Thing. So, um, but. We're, you know, we just just did our what we could, and, and from there. So you can do. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Anything for me? No. So thanks for a job well done. That sounds good. Yeah, thank you. You know, we're still a growing department, and um, they're really picking up and and putting forward. You know, and doing fantastic. Uh, I got people that just they want to go to school, they want to do all sorts of things, and and right now I'm kind of trying to hold them back a little bit, but yet give them the opportunity to, to do it. So, um, so we're working at it. Good. Okay. That's it. How many, how many major fires you've had this year so far? Well, last we've had six building fires in the first quarter, and we've had. Started out, we've got two already in this quarter. So, so we're, we're very right now. But we're, I think we're already at 39 calls for the month already, just this month. So, we're. I know you say you had a lot of building fires, that's why I was curious. Yeah, I mean, they may not be, you know, big, no, Limerick's building fires, but we've, we've had some, you know, wall fires and, and stuff like that. Um, but um, you know, it's considered buildings and stuff like that. So we're, like I said, we're at 38, 39 calls already for the year. I mean, for the uh, for this month. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're, we could double again at 60. I mean, we're it's it's a growing growing community, and people are calling for help more and more now. Yep. So, so that's it. Thank you, sir. All right. Enjoy the night. Did a good job. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> get some sleep.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. What's that? Yeah, exactly. One way to get an automatic phone call put his head down on the pillow. He must be exhausted. Oh, gotta be. He's a good guy. Yeah. Okay. Public. I'll go. Um, yeah. One thing I got to say before you stop. Yeah. If it's going to be um, personnel related, I'll have to stop you. I just have quite, it is personnel related, and I I, got, I have questions about that. Um, when yes. this happened back in 2011, he was kicked off the budget committee, and I don't understand. It, it was. I've been doing this since 2009. You're talking 10 years. I have since taken on two other towns along with Lebanon. Um, and of all the years that I've been an animal control officer, he's my second worst animal control call I've gone to. Uh, there's only one that beats him out, and that's the guy on the corner of the five corners up there in the village. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a pretty scary thing dealing with him, and I was appalled that at the budget committee he was allowed to just keep screaming and hollering. Um, he still was not stopped, and what you guys saw at the budget committee was small apples compared to the way he treated me that night. Wait a minute, he wasn't stopped. When was he? When was he screaming and hollering? He wasn't stopped. At the budget committee? Yeah. The whole time that we were talking, he's on the, on the other side of her, just... Uh, well, I, mean, I, I stopped him. He kept going. Your I mean, when somebody, when, somebody, when somebody throws a piece of paper, throws my report back at me and tells me to shut ass, there, there's something wrong with that. That's in public. You should have seen what it was like back in 2011. I, I'm, not, I'm not debating that, but it's, it's not. Once he started down that path, he was shut down. If you if you look at the video, the first time. If you look at the video, he kept going. He didn't. Well, stop. people don't stop instantaneously when they're wound up. I do, and I'm told to shut up. I do. Oh. You need to have better control than that, especially if you're in a public office, you know, some sort of public position. You should have more control than that. I don't. I don't disagree. And I don't understand how he got back in a in a public. Position. I don't understand that. Who's elected? It's too bad that I didn't bring those, these reports forward way before now because my, what you guys got, the first thing was from the sheriff's department. He said I manufactured it. No, I didn't. I had that report sent to me. And that's, that's what came through on the facts. The one that, that's handwritten by me, that was handwritten back in 2011. I don't put my statements in with my hours. And then the other piece you guys got was my hours. I try to protect the, the citizens, my citizens' privacy. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think any. It is obvious to anybody that watches that he has a personal issue. He doesn't even know me. Again, I, I'm not. I'm just saying, with the animal control officers, and, and it could be somebody brand new, he probably would have an issue. So my point is, is that. It, there is a personality and a personal difference, um, and again, that's he was that so not everybody. He was so intoxicated that night when I brought his dog back that he doesn't even recognize it was me. He thinks it was Mary. Again, I, I'm. You have a thankless job. I understand that. Um, I don't think any of the board members. Again, his vote is his vote. And it's for personal reasons. That's fine. And he's elected, so there's nothing. I just don't want him to keep trashing me or Mary. But and, he has and been. Again, and again, it's a it's a budget committee meeting. It wasn't on a selections meeting. I get it. We were there as advisory to the yep. to the budget committee. Yep. Um, and the first time it happened, three months ago or whenever, when the ACO budget came up, I stopped him as quickly as Thank I could. Then. Thank you. And I did. This is past night, as quickly as I can. As you know, it's hard to get him to, yeah, shut, up, I know. to shut up right away. I know. Um, especially if he goes off the deep end. Yeah, you had a um, state, state trooper telling him to put the gun down. So I put the gun down. Again, that, that happens. Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't do any good to, to go, 
it's it's it doesn't do any good to for employees, your employee or, or elected officials, and I get I know he's an elected official, um, and he has to be responsible for that. And that's a budget committee thing; they have to deal with that. Um, you know, but he is elected, so yes, I get it's it. Like, but it's I, like you can get a selectman that can act like an ass, and but the only thing that you can do is a recall. The other the other members can try to talk to him to provide some control, um, but unfortunately, that's. Yeah. It just it's just scary on my part that if he gets elected as a selectman, he's gonna be my boss. Seriously? And again, I think you know, again, there's a public hearing, there's candidates nights, there's things like that as a resident. I usually don't get involved in politics because oh, I don't I, I hear you. I hear you. So how do I get the word out that, you know, he's an unstable individual and he should not be in a public office. He really shouldn't be. Especially from what I saw the other night at the budget meeting, I'm like, really? <laughs> I, I would. I, it, that just appalled me. Again, that's your opinion. And I'm not going to say whether I agree with it or disagree with it, but I don't. Um, you know, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. They can vote at the ballot box. However, yeah. they um, people, you know, crazy people do get into office, into elected office. You see it all I the time. I don't want him as my boss. How do I get the word out? Again, well, again, if it's if he becomes your boss, and if there's anything that's improperly done, uh, you have a recourse, you, just like anybody else does. Like any other, what just, like any, just like any other employee does. So if you feel harassed, if you feel unjust, then you go to the board as a whole. You ask for an executive session, and you go to the board as a whole. Um, he, he may be part of that, but again, there's it's going to be a five-member board, so there'll be four others. Um, I can't believe that they're all going to be crazy. So um, so far we, we've been lucky since, so I, since is, I started for the So my point is, is that's, how, that's how that gets addressed. Yeah. It's, pers it's personnel issues, so it's done in executive So session. should I have asked for an executive session tonight? Again, I'm not well like, versed Paul, in any of this. Paul was, I'm not very well versed in that's this. That's why Paul was trying to say that if it's personnel, we really can't go there. Right. So I'm trying to talk more in generalities rather than... You need to be more and, and I'm bordering the line a little bit, but that's but personnel stuff is executive sessions because you hurt people. It is executive, so I should have asked for an executive. So it can hurt reputations because then, then if it's an executive session, you can go off. Oh, well, you'll, you'll, you'll never catch me. No, but I'm just saying you can you can say anything you want. It's all confidential. Okay. Okay. So, so we're not going to say hey, we don't want you to. The proper channel for me to ask for an executive session. You just ask, but again, it's going to be with. It's going to be with Paul and me and Laura if she's if she's here. She's not here tonight because she's sick, um, and that that would be it. Or okay. it would be with a new member of the five member board. Uh, come come June, um, and all you have to do is you ask the chairman, which is Paul, to get on the agenda for a, for an executive session. Okay. Um, but he'd, he'd be allowed to be here as well. Um, yeah, I mean it all depends on the on the, on the nature of it. Um, if she wants to explain her case that she had with him, I, I, I mean again, that's, that's up to you. That's up to you as a, as a chairman whether you feel. Um, I have to reread that again. Yeah, I mean I don't. You know he's he's again he's an elected official. He's not really an employee, so there's a, a little bit of a difference. Um, so it's one thing if we were to get a complaint. So the other, the reason why we asked, we were to get a complaint from the public yep. about an employee, yep. and that person wanted to come in and talk to the selectman about that. The employee has the right to be present. Okay, so that's which makes sense. Is yes, it does. But that's the employee. He's not an employee. So again, I'm not. I'm not really I'm sure. I'm not positive. I have to find out because I really don't know. Okay. So it's the, the other way around, I know the employee has the right, but as an elected official, do they get the right, or as a, you know what I'm saying, um, so I, I, that part I don't know. Um, for you to inform the board about a situation that happened back in whatever it was, 2011, and to, and to fill us in on that case, I mean, that's, you know, and because we may be talking about a resident, I mean, again, I don't know whether that's executive session or not. Yeah, I you know, but it's it's not. I don't think it's us that you have to convince. 
No, I know. So, I, I just I know that. I, so I, I just want. Yeah, I just had questions as to how somebody that got and you could speak privately with any board member. So that's that's also the option. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit more informal, but you know what I'm saying. That also might be. Might work. So I don't know if that helps, but sort of kind of. He did. May I address something he did bring up that night, though? about how the his dog should have been brought to a shelter instead of left with a private resident. Is that okay to, to talk about that? Well, I'm not mentioning his name. I haven't yet. No, you've done very well. I haven't no, yet. You're, you're talk, if you're talking <clears throat> process, it's different. Yeah. The, uh, he said that his dog should have been brought to the shelter that night back in 2011. It was not brought to the shelter because neither Mary nor I were around at that time. Um, the resident that found the dog uh, called us and I returned her phone call because Mary was out of town and didn't have great coverage. She texted me and said, hey, can you call this, this number? Um, and when I, I called her, she said, I, I can keep the dog. It will save, you know, whoever this dog belongs to, it will save the resident uh, impound fees and shelter fees and so on and so forth. And I said, well, it's either you keep it for the night until or until Mary and I can get here, uh, get there to get it, or kick it back out the door. So I felt it was safe for Mary and I both felt it was safe for, for the dog that if she just keep, she, so she did, she kept the dog until we could get there right. and, and we did, we got it back to him uh, as soon as we could. It took him over 24 hours to call us and then when he did call, he wasn't very nice about it, as you probably read in the report. Uh, so that's, if he raises questions on that again, that's why the dog was not brought to the shelter and neither one of us were in town. So, And this lady we've used before when we couldn't get to the shelter and she's awesome with the animals. She, she takes very good care of them until we can get there. So it's better than the kicking them back out. Yeah. yeah. Out on the road, so. Anywho, okay. Sorry. That's okay. No, I. Just don't know where to go with it. That's all. Oh, no. <clears throat> and it's yeah. I'm very threatened by it. I don't want to be alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I'm glad I had the sheriff with me that night. So thank you for hearing me out. Mm -hmm. You guys have any other you got my number. If you have any other suggestions, call me. Or, or. Thanks. Sure, sure. Yeah, hi, I'm on uh, the Maple Estates. I'm just uh, basically here to confirm that we are not on the ballot um, and that we will be going on the ballot in November. And also um, just to see if uh, we need to have you be on the agenda and the agenda process that we need to go through. Um, okay. get this thing. Did we get a letter from the engineering firm yet? From the insurance? No, the engineering firm. No. Uh, what was it called now? CW Cole. Yeah, SW call. SW call. We do have holes in our, our pavement, so they were there on Friday. They were there? Yeah, okay, there's, so. there's holes drilled. Okay. Somebody was there. Okay. So. At first you said holes. I'm like, no, no problem. Yeah, I can wow. say it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a good guy, but yeah. I'm glad you qualified that. Uh, yeah. he, he told me that he was going to get on it shortly, and so I, I didn't know. So that's that. because we're paying for it. So we, the reason he was there was because of us, not because of okay. Aaron. Well, we don't know that for sure yet. Because Aaron took to the check off, so I don't know if he did or didn't. I haven't heard of any check being dropped off. Yeah, I haven't heard, oh. I haven't heard anything either way right now. So I'll let her know. Okay. Sure. So at least, they, at least they got that time then. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I know I know there's a time limit on you guys to get it on the ballot and you have to do your thing, but I don't know if we made the time deadline or not. No, he, he didn't. Not for Jim. He didn't miss it, yeah. That's so Stacy. No checks. Yeah, that Stacy's aware of, and she should be aware of them. Well, he'd, he'd be paying them. Oh, but I thought he was saying, oh, he was supposed to drop them off at check? He was gotcha. supposed to drop them off. Gotcha. That, that following day, he was supposed to drop gotcha. them off. Gotcha. And you don't know whether that happened. No, I haven't heard. Gotcha. But the fact that they drilled the holes, I say they, he, he might have paid. Okay. I heard Friday morning. They did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is confirmed we're not in ballot, but we are. And again, because it's because we had no way of, we had to have a, we had to have a concrete answer about the, that part of the road right. before we put it on the ballot. Okay. So, so, I mean, as long as other, all the other, the, the small stuff is easy to get done, yeah, it was okay. this thing. It's, this was the, this was the bigger one. So I see no reason why it can't be on the November ballot. 
Okay. So is there any process for us to, to handle to get on there? Or we're, I would. Anything else we need to do or follow up on? If it was if it was me, I would be on the agenda after the June vote because you're going to have a five-member board, and it's up to them what goes on the ballot. Okay. So you've got Paul and I, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to be there, and you're going to have a five-member board. So I would, as far as, I mean, I would think that Paul and Lauren would make sure that they honor that, but yeah. I'm just right. saying is it brings that whole entire new board up to speed. Yeah. So again, mm -hmm. I would come back before then, but I'd come back, I'd get on the agenda, Soon after the election in June. Okay. The uh, the signs are being in the process right now, so you should be seeing those. In yep. Okay. Between now and in June, anyways. And now you get the whole board, the whole new board, to hopefully sign off on. Sure, not a problem. You don't have to do a petition. You don't have to do because that's what you really need to know is that yep. if you guys need to do a petition or not. Okay. That's good. So. All right. Mm -hmm. Plus, you'll, you'll certainly know whether everything else is done. I mean, yeah. By then, everything should be done. Great. So with signs and I would think. Yeah. We're trying, to, we're trying to get all that done now, so. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. I mean, our main concern, of course, is the snow. So I know. I know. Right, so. I know. I, 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 I want to get it this thing yeah, yeah, yeah. June. I just, but. Yeah, we no, I know. We're down there, so that's so why I'm here. So thank you. So. But when you said holes in the pavement, that's tight. Yeah, I, I, I like it. <laughs> well, it doesn't look good. Uh, it's a nice road, you know. But anyway. <laughs> they did bother filling back in, huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'll give you a chance anyway. All right. Minutes. <laughs> minutes. You have a lot of minutes. It's getting smaller and smaller. It's getting there. I got to <laughs> I got an eye appointment a couple weeks before I take my play. <laughs> if it gets this small, I got to take my glasses. Here's two more for you. And here's two more for you. Two more? We had three meetings last week. <laughs> well, this one's, this one's bigger. I can see these. Let me do this one first. This you one. want a magnifying glass? <laughs> I'll do the knife first. They have them with a little flashlight on it. If it doesn't all fit on one page, you can make the font smaller, it'll fit. I never called him. I have that on my list of things to bring up tonight. Did he talk to you? Have you talked to him recently? No, you told me you were going to hear it. No, no. <laughs> All right, I'll call him. Well, no, I'll call, I'll call him tomorrow, but I just, it got off my list. All right, I right, shall right, right here. <laughs> That's why we review minutes so I can see what here. I... <laughs> change on the ninth minutes? Tuesday. 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 Not Thursday. I told we missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was, that's why I was gloating because I found something. Mm. That's all I found. Motion to accept the Tuesday, April 9, 2019 minutes as corrected. Seconded. All in favor? Make a motion to accept the Thursday, April 11th minutes as written. Seconded. All in favor? 
And I make a motion to accept the April, Friday, April 12th minutes as written. Well, we didn't have any time last week. Seconded. All in favor? For this week is forty-one thousand two hundred ninety-four dollars and three cents. I think I just gave those two. I don't know if the two would be easy if it was okay to go. Yeah. You'll turn them on. Is that the uh, pressure station at 10? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was quite. Yeah. It was fun. Okay, I have a training quest here for Valerie and Lynn to attend the I've Got the Job What Now workshop which has to do with the duties of the tax collector, treasurer, settlement, discharge, liens, real estate taxes, etc. Okay. And that is for July 11th. I think we're ready. Out that day. Huh? Nobody's out that day. Not that I see. Not like I can't see. <laughs> A little nervous now. And two training requests one for Mary Beth and one for Jackie. Both to change. Uh, 10 MMA's verbal judo workshop in Saco. And that is July 22nd, which is a Monday. Who's that for? Mary Beth and Jackie. Okay. And we out? Oh. That's the, you said July 22nd? July 22nd. Yeah, it's a yeah. Monday. I don't see anything. Yeah. So that means Val's all by herself? Yes. It's a full day courses in soccer. Is it a full day? In, isn't the judo just the afternoon? I don't know. I didn't see the actual people. Doesn't say on there. It goes doesn't to. say. I don't think that's an. I can't be an all day. Yeah. Do you want me to go ask them if they have a table to class? 
Just ask if they know if it's an afternoon class. I'm, I'm thinking it starts at four, but I'm not positive. Oh, it's like after almost after hours. So yeah. Yeah. Work. Okay. Yeah. Because I think I looked at that as myself. Yeah. Verbal judo. It's how to defuse riled up residents. We don't need that in Lebanon. <laughs> Professional wisdom. <laughs> Stacy's attention. Hey, Stace. Yes. You're on. You're on. Yes. You was going to explain. So she has requested time off, um, and so she's personal and comp. These are the ones she's requested off. And then this is the spreadsheet. So this is what she's used. So this is just her personal. She hasn't earned any comp time yet. So if she takes her, if this is all personal, it's negative 14.5 hours. But she's going to training that she says she'll use her comp time for, but it hasn't happened yet. So I just wanted to make you aware when you, if you approve this, that that's where we're at right now with personal, but if she does do the comp time, but it just hasn't been, it's just accrued yet. So my only thought is this should also be for no, no pay then as well. I would feel because if we're going to approve the hours, if no pay is not selected, then that means then versus. Right. As long as it's comp time, that's great. But if right. it's not comp time, if she still wants the hours, we've already approved those these days off. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yep. So if if no pay here is circled as well, yep. well that's an option. Yeah. I don't like that way it's I mean we understand what she's trying what she's getting at, but I think can you just check with her if she's yep. okay with Yeah. You want if you Absolutely. explain what you just said? Sure can. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I'm comfortable the other way. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. No. Because otherwise, without that being circled, it's not right. And if she doesn't have the time, then yep. Right. No. Any like problems? Eight thirty to four. Oh, it, it is. is. Of course. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm just thinking. There's nothing really due. Taxes aren't coming in then. And Val's okay with doing, you know, Val's okay with doing it or something. You know? She probably knows it, yeah. Yeah. But don't forget that Stacy's not here either. Right. It's be you and Val. Right. So Steve, if somebody we'll had to go we'll out and go we'll to a Steve, bank or something. We'll put Steve behind the desk. You can't, you can't <laughs> leave anybody here alone. That's the only issue. Right. Well, Steve will be here. So Steve may be here as far as if She's somebody has to go to the bank. Huh? She's fine with the yeah. bill. Yeah. She understands. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be the only thing I see. Yeah, just something. I couldn't really ask if it was payback for Tuesday, and they said yes. <laughs> Make sure she wasn't on here for that. Right. That is the beginning of the new year, too, so a uh, new budget year. So. Yep.
we don't have a lot of Lebanon test pieces to talk about. Hmm. Every town has them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of funny. You don't need any more action on the JavaScript yeah, mirror, I'll send that. Yeah, that's just my copy. Is that the school warrant? Mm hmm. So you actually have that as a separate agenda item. Excellent. Then we'll buy. So why don't you hold off on that for a second? We have any other people? We want to do abatements for the paper? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that all you have left for paperwork? It's the only thing I got left. I was just reading it. Um, all right. So we have one, two, three, four abatements and one supplement. Um, we have an abatement. Um, Basically, one is a correction of value uh, of the school. So, uh, make a motion to abate account 113, which is an abatement for correction of building value due to storm damage. So, essentially, the building collapsed and is basically there's no value. And so, we're removing the value of the building, which is a $50,000 valuation for, um, so it's map R158. Second bit. All in favor. The next abatement is for account three five oh six and the building was assessed assuming that it was built on April 1st, but it wasn't. It was built shortly thereafter, so therefore April 1st is our magic date. So it's basically taking the building off. So it's 102400 in valuation. This is the 1819? So this is the 1819, that's correct. So the, the coming one will be on, but it was for the previous one. So it looks like he had done a supplemental, figuring they missed it, but I don't think they went and they visited it towards the end of April, but come to find out it got built during April, but it wasn't there on April 1st. So they had to remove it. So this is removing it. Okay. So there's no th nothing here on land. This is my question about the land, my email I did. I had a question, why isn't any land on here? Because this was basically just removing that supplemental that happened. So it's 102, 400 evaluation. Okay. So, I'm, so I'll do. I'll read. I make a motion again to uh, abate account three five zero six for one hundred two thousand four hundred in valuation. Second. All okay. I did see that. Is instant building you're talking about? Right. Uh, the next one is for account 2892, and it's an abatement uh, for $9,080 in valuation. And the reason is because the gentleman had a survey done of his land, and so there's actually a hair less land. So everything else is the same, the building is the same value, the land, um, and it looks like this is a significant amount of land. Um, so the land value is down by that $9,080. Second it. I'll take it. Oops. And then the last one is a combination of an abatement with a supplement. 
Uh, so through the abatement first, it's basically it's, a, it's abating uh, the land by itself because it's doing a supplement with the land and building. So right after this, it will have a supplement that's for the land and building. So this one is just 35000 in valuation, just taking the land away, and then we'll do a supplement for the entire amount. Second. That's for account 3843. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the next is uh, 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 I make a motion to. Uh, Commit to the tax collector a supplemental commitment, which is for um, account three eight four three for a total valuation of one hundred eighty three thousand dollars. Second. Okay. all the paperwork. Signing of the school budget warrant. So I know Chris is here for the mowing contract. Yeah. He says he's here for entertainment, but he really isn't. <laughs> so I know you want to talk about that first. Ken? It's up to you guys. It doesn't matter. I'm not worried. How much do I have to read? Your call. Yeah, I don't know how much you have to read either. It's a school warrant. I think it's just, I think you have to make a motion to sign the school warrant. <laughs> Let me just read the uh, what it's for, then I'll, I'll make the motion. It's the uh, warrant notice of election call in Maine School Administrative District number 60, budget validation referendum. To the voters 11, you are hereby notified the district budget validation referendum election will be held at Lebanon Elementary School, 65 Upper Guinea Road in the town of Lebanon on Tuesday, June 11, 2019, for the purpose of determining the following articles. 1A, to elect a moderator to preside at said meeting. Article 1, do you favor approving the main school administrative district number 60 budget for the upcoming school year that was adopted at the latest district budget meeting? Article 2, do you wish to continue budget validation referendum process in Maine School Administration District Number 60 for an additional three years? Informational note on Article 2, a yes vote will require Maine School Administrative District Number 60 to continue to conduct a referendum to validate its annual school budget for the next three years. A no vote will discontinue the budget validation referendum for at least three years and provide instead that the annual school budget shall be finally adopted at the meeting of the voters, the main school administration district number 60. Articles one and two shall be by secret ballot. Polls will be open immediately after election of the moderator following the commencement of the meeting at 6 a.m. and closed at 8 p.m. Make a motion to sign the warrant for the above upcoming District ballot, ballot validation referendum. Second motion. All in favor? Mm. 
Can you see anything about a notary? So I guess I can sign it. set with the mowing, right? Because we've already carried a lot of potential down. That's what that one is. Okay. 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 That's right. It's copies. Is that all it is? Is 10 million copies for signing? Mm hmm each one we get supposed to. Right. Now we know why Laura didn't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> His family's going to call me back because they're looking at me second or ninth on Thursday to come in. I told, so just so you know, I'll probably like, keep those agendas a little bit open until they call me back. You, uh, you voted to fly? I've got to go over there tomorrow. Yeah. I was supposed to go today, but then I forgot I had the training, so I'll call you tomorrow. Do you know what we're looking at for the trailer? The auctioning or bid process for that? Uh, that's all my questions okay. I asked. And all right. But thank you for asking. Remind me. Okay. Call me. Yeah. I missed one? Couldn't it? Wow. That's not like Paul. <clears throat> you did the right thing to throw the pot. Loving to correct us tonight, aren't you? He's enjoying that. We're going to team up, Paul, now.
The uh, next item on the agenda list is the mowing contracts. Um, I have a letter here from Gilpatrick Property Services. Service, sorry. Uh, the purpose of this letter is to formally request a two-year extension on our mowing contract with the town of Lebanon. As you are aware, as for our contract, there is a clause allowing for a two-year extension. Gil Patrick Property Services appreciates the positive working relationship that we've had for many years with the town, and we thank you for your consideration. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept this letter and extend the contract for two years. I second the motion. All in favor? I talked to Mr. Tim Mayo of TNM Landscaping for Prospect Hill Cemetery Mowing Agreement. He also requested a one-year extension per, as per the contract. Uh, he was supposed to give me a, a letter, which I have not seen yet, to update that, but he is requesting it. So I'd say go ahead and make a motion. I mean, they've done a good job. So. Even though we don't have the letter, I mean, if he's requesting it, you've talked to him, then we can uh, make up the contract and we can yeah. sign it. Yeah. Stand by. So I make the motion to extend his contract for one more year. I second the motion. All in favor? <coughs> so you have three contracts to write up. She's all done. <laughs> um, we need to get on a calendar for the board to do Stacy and Lynn's review. Six month review. I think yours is up. Is that correct? The yours 29th, is? mine is too. And then hers is the next month. Yeah. Is it April, May? Mm hmm. We're a month apart. So it's 429 for you? Mm hmm. Or is this 529? No, well, is she exactly five, a month? Yeah, I don't think it's 529. I think it's sure the exact date, yeah. Too much right now. <clears throat> if we wait too long on that one, she may not be here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I was leaning towards trying to do them both at the same time. Okay. But it's your call, but we need to get one at least one on the schedule. Yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> I mean, whether we do it after the after a meeting and then, you know, executive session after a meeting or whatever, but it's just, I just wanted to get that on your mm -hmm. uh, on your calendar no, no. schedule. No, it's good to do. Laura says it's only been six months. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it seems like <laughs> you're saying the same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the other one I brought up. Um, I actually was going to, because you and I had mentioned, uh, we had seen each other about a town engineer, and I was going to bring that up with Laura, but I'm going to save that for mm -hmm. the next meeting. There's no, there's no real rush. Yeah. Um, I did want to bring up, um, because I, I think it was the last, one of the previous meetings, there was a question about escrow and interest rates. Um, I had done uh, some research. Uh, I found two different sources, but looking at the uh, historical uh, interest rates for savings accounts in the U.S. Uh, going back to July of 2013, from January 2018, interest rates were, the national interest rates for savings accounts was 0 0.06. So that's 0 0.06, not 0 0.6. So not even a half a percent, not even a quarter of a percent. Um, they were in January 2010, they were only at about 0.21. So again, they were very, very small. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> so they went from that way down to you know July of 2012, they were at around a 0 0.9, 0 0.09. So they've been pretty, pretty low for a while. Um, they just started to, to creep back up 
uh, July of 2018. This is showing the average is 0 0.08. So, um, and then there's another one. Checking accounts are actually showing uh, about the same trend, but at a 0 0.04. Um, another one here had, had savings accounts again, uh, 0 0.06. And this was from Bank Geo Banking Rates. Um, so what I did was I, again, I'm just doing, just doing rough math, but I use an Excel spreadsheet to calculate the future value of a dollar. So I basically put in $30,000. I use an average percentage rate of 0 0.06, even though it might have been lower, it might have been higher, but just to see. Um, and I did it for six years. <clears throat> I don't know if it's been exactly six years, uh, but I just wanted to do a rough number, and that came, it gave me $288.95 of interest. <clears throat> so, and that's compounded monthly, because uh, again, you can put that in the calculation. So, I think ours was $290 something dollars, is, is our, what our calculation was. This told me that we were pretty close. So, while Stacy only did for 2016 on. That doesn't mean it wasn't done before. And it had already been pre-entered for the entire time um, up until I think Jordan got into office. Jordan hadn't done it, and so Stacy had to do from 2016 forward. So prior, prior to that, it was the previous treasurer. I think it might have been uh, Jeanette LeMay, and I don't know who it was prior to that. Um, so we haven't double-checked their accounting, um, but I don't see the need because based on this and based on what our number is, I think it's pretty close. So I'd say it's pretty accurate, you know, without spending a lot of time and energy. You know, if we had done this and it had come out to be $2,000, then that would say maybe we need to go look and dig a little bit deeper. But I don't see the need to, to go any further because it's pretty close based on average rates. So, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, Hey, kids, are we looking to get those out here? The uh, information itself. Oh, I gotta so catch up with Scott. We're gonna. Okay. Um, we just did that. I was gonna bring up Champion Street work uh, oh. again, primarily for Laura, but <laughs> she wasn't with us down there. Um, so I'll do that next time around. Um, and I just didn't want us to forget about the speed sign that we got from DOT that we can get out there this spring. So maybe we can bring that up to Scott the next time for next for next meeting. We gotta find a place to get it mounted and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Speed feedback sign and maybe reach out to state police and think of see what they think too. Gotta to find a road that uh well, where did you say the state crew cop was going by? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. It must be a decent road right. yeah. 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 <laughs> decent stretch. Yeah, Jim Grant's good. Yeah. So um, I think that's all I had. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the one that you mentioned was the mobile home. Where do we stand with that right now? Um, like we just had to what? We just had to. Put, put an official bid notice out, I think. We already have we their have conditions the, that they we want. Have the conditions. Mm -hmm. I think we I see We have a key. We have a key. A lock. So I think how we did it last time is we set up, I mean, we set up a date for visit. People wanted to see it. I think we also came up with a minimum bid. Um, I believe we might have done minimum bid just enough to cover the taxes that were due. Um, In that class today, it says that when you do that too, you should, you should count in because this year has already been assessed even though it's not on there you should put that into the bid to recoup all the costs as well you would lose yeah although we haven't although it wasn't ever on our property it's not on a piece of property that we're right. you would do that if it was in a like a tax or like another piece of property but this is only the property taxes but I mean, we, could, we could come up with it whatever we want for a minimum bid but i guess we need to have whatever the taxes were owed on and all the fees, the legal yeah. all yeah. of that, we don't yeah. have a bill on him yet. Yeah. So we need to have that so we can kind of recover all And are they charging us for moving it? 
No. No. That's okay. what, that's the seller. That's the, the buyer's responsibility. No, no, no. I mean, did oh, I don't think colonial. Did. I don't think no. that you. Okay. I don't believe they did. No. They could. Yeah, they could, they could have been charging that. Really. So, they just wanted it off the lot, yeah. so they could put it on one of the lots. So. Okay. Um. So we need to come up with a cost, but a cost so we can come up with a minimum bid, and then we got to set a date for the auction, for the uh, opening of the bids, and uh, a date for you know visit for basically the. Is that a four week? Is it usually a four week bid process? Yeah, I think four weeks is fine. I don't think you need to have it any longer than that. You should have the bid stuff as far as the, what we did last time, Brian. I think I found a couple of little things. I might, I might have something to do as far as how to promote it. <clears throat> you want to try to draft that this week and we can look at it? And yeah. Maybe we can bring it to the table next Thursday just to chop through it. Yeah, all right. Boston Post King, you already talked about. And I'll need an executive session at the end. Uh, the union is contacting me, so. Okay. Be a union discussion. Okay. Negotiations. When the time comes. All right. Okay. That's all I have. So, back to the public. Go ahead. I don't know. I mean, be how long you guys been here? No, I'm fine. Right? All right. I just want to talk to you guys about the Eagle Project. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, please. I don't know if I was breaking off or something like that. But so I'm just. Um, do you want to look at it? Sure. What's your name? Uh, Nathan Rose. Okay, thank you. I was told due to the nature of like the project, since it's not like building a bench or anything like that, that I have to go to like a selectman. And I went to the North Berwick one, and they said that I should come here since I'm a citizen of North, um, Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even though it's being held in North Berwick. So basically, so you're holding a you're holding a self defense seminar. Yeah, I have a um, was it a couple of my own teachers is, are willing to help and show like things. Also, um, also discussing like um, social awareness and stuff like that. Like understanding if like you know if you're in a hostile situation, how to like de-escalate it, and understanding that you don't have to like you know you don't there's nothing stop like nothing stopping you from running away there's not it's not cowardice or anything like that it's just being smart and you know pretty much also showing you if there's no other option then you know you can protect yourself and then get away mm -hmm. and, stuff like that. and that's a big and i feel like that's giving back more to the community than just building a bench so is that like a one day summer yeah the only one day we are you going to hold it at the school? I'm thinking about, yeah, at, North, at Noble. I um, I thought that I'd probably like to discuss it with the uh, selectmen in North Berwick since you know, it would be held in North Berwick, but it wouldn't be specifically for the school. It just be to the general public period. Yeah. But they told me to come um, here and talk to you guys about it. Okay. Do you need us to sign something? or As, the, um, as the beneficiary representative, since the beneficiary itself is the, com uh, the community, or like, you know, yeah, the community itself. It's not going to be like a specific organization or anything like that. Um, I talked to one of the uh, main people that handles the Eagle Scout project because that was a big question I had, and they said to talk to Slotman. Okay. <laughs> Did you have a date yet for it? Not yet. All I know is that it's, um, I got a general idea, like late May to early June. So I the four, four schools out? Yeah. Because I turn 18 in July, and that's pretty much, if I don't get it done before then, that's screwed. Are you, you, you guys get turned out at 18? Yeah. Oh, yeah, much. yeah. Maybe that's why I know yeah. that. Doing good, how are you? And maybe why I never got the eagle, because I get turned out. <laughs> I, get the, I get the life, I never get the eagle. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was because I got too old. It was a long time. Yeah. Well, 
wasn't until a month ago until I decided to start getting back into it. Yeah. Yeah. So you said the structure you have, you have you take self defense right now. Yeah, I've uh, martial art right now. Yeah, I've been like I've been doing it ever since I was a kid, and I'm really passionate about it. And I believe that you know, one, it helps you gain self confidence in yourself, being able to know that you can protect yourself, and also it's just an important knowledge to have because like you know, what if you do get into that situation? I mean, you know, you never think it will, but it can. Mm -hmm. And also having the knowledge to know that like you know, you can back away from it. There's nothing you know. You're not forced to fight somebody. Mm -hmm. You can back away from it. And stuff like that, and that I feel like that's a big thing that a lot of self defense seminars don't really discuss or gloss over it, and they like to show more of the techniques and stuff like that. And it's a real big emphasis that I want to like get across as well. We actually just signed up for two of our people to go to what's called a verbal judo <laughs> class, really, which is basically how to deal with people verbally. Better, right? It's how to how to handle because people get yeah. wrapped up verbally and how to diffuse that situation. Yeah, I mean it's an important skill, like verbal, like verbal communication. It's a big skill, and it can get you a lot of out of a lot of stuff too. Yep. Yep. Okay. I make a motion that we sign off on the Eagle Scout project. Seconded. All in favor? Um, do you know? Is there a place that we sign? I didn't see anything. Yeah, there's the um, yeah. the last page, I believe. You guys see beneficiary approval. Do you want to sign this, Chairman? Maybe we both want to sign. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being too disruptive. <laughs> Yeah, if you get us a date, we can put it on our website and stuff. So okay. we can yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you also mind uh, writing down contact information? Okay. It's I'll get you a card. It. It's part. Okay, thank you. Plus, I I've been told I need to go too for self defense. <laughs> <laughs> I get attacked all the time. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's open there. It's open to everybody. I don't want to exclude a single group. So good. Feel free. All right. Yeah. All right. Quick question. Yes. Parents' name? Huh? Uh, Andrea and um, Thomas. Okay. Yes, and yeah. You've, uh, you've grown a lot. Thank you. I knew Andrea and Thomas many years ago when, when you were a lot small. <laughs> That's why when you said in rows, it's like, I can't yeah. really. He told me to uh, make sure that I mentioned, uh, mentioned it, uh, his name before I got here. I'm going to hold it against you. No. Yeah. No, that's good. Thank you. You all? No more, I'm all set. Um, make a motion to go into executive session for labor negotiations one MRSA 4056D as in dog, Delta, whatever you want. Second the motion. All in favor? Okay. Wow, I'm excited earlier.